All right, so this is the big thing that the fan base is talking about right now, the TNA fan base, and of course the uh, the people outside of TNA because it gets some clicks. But Josh Alexander's option picked up by Anthem, and uh, I think it was Sean Ross Sapp that had uh, put it out that he did not want his option picked up by TNA. He wanted to see what was out there. But they went ahead and picked it up, and he's going to honor the contract. He said he's going to honor it. I mean, this is clearly the place that was his home. It was the company that put him on the map for the most part. So I think we know he's a professional. He's the man at the top of the card. We know he's a pro, so we don't expect that he's he's going to be the first one to cause the, the stink here. But it's also disconcerting because this is not the guy you want to lose. Whether you're a fan of his or you're not a fan of his, or there's been times I've found him a little boring, but I've also stated recently after seeing him really wrestle and wrestle live that I have a, a new appreciation for him and what he can do and what he means to the company. But this is not the dude you want to lose. The guy that you put all this equity into, uh, you know, you were able to have him break Bobby Roode's record. You know, when you look at WWE and they have someone in their past who they need to erase, they're like, hey, we need to break this record. They do it. They'll they'll erase it. To where TNA was leaving, they'll they'll leave records for years. Uh, because it gives them an excuse to post Bobby Roode clips on YouTube. But they really didn't have anyone who could just fill those shoes and who could be their AJ, who could be their EC3. Just who could who could be the dude, the gold standard, the world beater, you know, they've done a very good job with him this year of booking him strongly. Well, they always book him strongly, but they've just booked him outside of the title picture for the first time in years. And I've been very much enjoying it. I, as a, I've never enjoyed, uh, you know, Hulk Hogan, a great example. When I was a kid, I never enjoyed someone who was just always lurking around the title scene. Kind of like what Charlotte Flair does now. I've never enjoyed that in wrestling. So every time they, take someone who's, you know, who typically was uh, and kind of take them out of that picture for a little bit, I tend to enjoy it. I actually liked John Cena more than most people when he was, you know, when people were really sick of him. And he was kind of in that title picture. For some reason, it didn't bother me too much with him, but I did enjoy him much more when he was outside of it. So... The timing was impeccable because the hourglass has come out. Everyone knows what we're talking about. The the TNA talent posting hourglasses, and he was the first one. And, of course, it's got everybody talking like, what what are they talking about? Are they saying their contracts are running up? It's their, you know, we're counting down our time to leaving. I don't think that's what it was. Because it would be just counterproductive in relation to the letter that they put out. To where they appear to say, we're going to give you every opportunity in the world to succeed. This is the company we love. We're doing this for the fans. You don't turn around a few days later and say, hey, I can't wait to freaking leave. So I really don't think that's what it was. Unless there's some news that had come out before me recording this. That I did not see. I do not think that's what it was. And they're but they're doing that on purpose, right? They're they're trying to get people talking. They're trying to put the pressure on Anthem. But what I think in regards to this these hourglasses, I think that it was uh I think they're I think and I've got a couple of people that have agreed to me, agreed with me and I I wasn't even the one that came up with with this, um, I'm the one actually that agreed with other people. That I think it's in ref- in reference to the letter that they wrote to Anthem, because you know at the end they said, "Hey, we want a response. We want to sit down and we want to talk." They put a lot of time and effort into that, and that came out about a week ago. And if they haven't heard back from Anthem, that is a problem. The timing was impeccable because. 
of course, when they put these hourglasses out, that's when they announced, hey, we are extending Josh Alexander. This was a bad look on social media, though, because the company has never announced picking up somebody's option. This is not like the Charlotte Hornets Facebook page. We, we've picked up the, the rookie option on LaMelo Ball and we've extended him like wrestling does not do that. So I think they did that as a rumor killer. But I think it actually probably killed morale a little bit, <laughs> probably more so, more so than the rumor. Because the dude did not want him to pick up the contract. And when you put that out, you're letting you're letting them know, hey, we we run shit around here. We're in charge. We're the big dogs. And you remember when Anthem first took over and Jeff Jarrett was involved and they tried to play hardball with everybody and it got over very poorly. That's not going to be good if that's what's going on this time as well. You remember them trying to sue the Hardys and over intellectual property. Those are some pretty dark times, and this mirrors that. This is the kind of stuff they would have done back then. Jay Chung retweeted it. Like, Josh didn't retweet it. She retweeted it, and she put, TNA has picked up Josh's contract option or whatever. I don't know what she wrote exactly. There was no exclamation mark at the end. It was just a period. And if you don't follow Jade... She interacts with her Twitter pretty well. Like if you respond to her or you tweet at her, she typically sees it and she will acknowledge it. There's some wrestlers who don't and and personalities and talents that don't look at their feeds at all, their replies. But she does. And her whole feed, people are like, it's a mixed bag. People are like, oh, that's a good thing. People, oh, that's a bad thing. People are asking, is that a good thing? What what do you think? You know, people are fishing. And she didn't acknowledge, from when I saw the tweet, a single person on there. Which kind of tells me this is not a good thing. They're going to be professionals, but it's not a good thing. And if he leaves, then your ring announcer leaves. But the hourglasses, I, I think I think TNA was doing some damage control. But I think it's in reference to the letter. Because if you look at the names here. Um, Josh Alexander, Mike Bailey, Tommy Dreamer, Jordan Grace, Masha Slamovich, Chris Bay. I think Ray Wall was eventually added to this list. I think Kazarian might have as well. I think that this is a lot of the group that was involved with the letter. Because we know that it wasn't the, it's either chat GPT or it was a handful of wrestlers, but it was not the entire roster. So I think these I think this is the group that was kind of involved in the letter. And they want answers. And they want they want to talk. They said, "Hey, we got a show coming up like what's going on here?" And maybe they maybe they will have that conversation in New Orleans. But that's really what I think it is. Because you got Tommy Dreamer on there. He's not even a contracted wrestler. He's one of the main guys in the creative department. He's just going to leave. He's waiting his <laughs> waiting for his time to leave. He can leave tomorrow if he wants to. And um, there was someone else. That's why I think it was Raywald that might have got in on the action later. But there was someone else that had popped up and someone who wasn't under a contract. So if you're not other, under a contract, why would you do this? I mean, uh, Matt Cardona got involved in this. Sammy Callahan. So this is this has nothing to do with contracts. I think... Those are some guys who care about the men and women in the locker room and uh, what Scott may have done for them. Cardona straight up said what Scott did for me when AEW fired me. I mean, when WWE fired me, AEW didn't want me. He gave me an opportunity because TNA was becoming the land of opportunity. So I don't think it has anything to do with contracts. I think I think there's people who just in the know um, who want to know. What's next and what, how is this company going to be ran going forward? And um, where's the collaboration? They're looking for collaboration. That's, that's what it boils down to. This TNA roster is going to give Anthem the opportunity, but they're looking for collaboration to where I think they've trusted Scott to, to steer this, steer the ship. They don't so much trust these guys, but they're like, we want to collaborate with you. 
We want to figure this out together. And that's what I think this is all about. So we'll see. But I do think that picking up Josh's contract was not uh, doing it in a public manner like that, which they thought was a rumor killer. I think it, I think it hurt him and they really need some, some lessons in PR management over there because this screams the very beginning of Anthem. When Jeff Jarrett was around, Ed Norholm was the president. It screams that stuff. And we're, it's, it's like, we're right back to that era, which was a real shitty time. When I talked about, they were cutting contracts in my Macklin video of EC3, James Storm, Lashley, yeah, the Hardys were another. We're not re-signing these dudes. I think they actually did come to a, an agreement with Jeff, but I think Matt was the one playing hardball. Anthem was playing hardball, and then we lost a broken gimmick out of nowhere. So what's going to happen? We're going to lose a system out of nowhere next. You know, th- this has been a mess. It's, it looks like it's going to continue to be a mess. I think this is actually the tame period here because... The, the the roster is not appearing to turn on the company yet. They're giving them an opportunity. But the minute they do, the minute they're just like, we're done, it's going to be the biggest shit show you ever seen. 